This is the morning after the worst day of my life. And when I say the worst day, I mean the worst pain. This one cut deep. <laughs> You know, normally when I turn on the camera, yeah, I started to get comfortable, like, I know what to say. But right now, I'm just mad lost for words, for thoughts. Like, I'm thinking a thousand things, but I'm empty at the same time. My mom was my... She was my mom. Brother, my sister, my dad, she was everything in one. We had a mad relationship, like. We would go at it like brother and sister. And we was both stubborn, man. It's her fault why I'm stubborn, man. I'm blaming her. I inherited it from her, man. I can't be stubborn sometimes. Phone's been ringing. And to all of you that's ringing, please don't take offense. I just need to talk to myself right now. I don't need to talk to nobody. I don't need to tell me that you're sorry. I don't need to hear that right now. I need you to understand, like, Life can be mad shoot. My mum was 65 years of age. I'm not supposed to be doing this right now. I thought we had time, like. Life is precious. And we only have one life to live. Make sure you live it, man. Make sure... When... When you deal with people here, yeah, Make sure you leave them like you're not going to see them tomorrow. Make sure they hear those words. Make sure that kindness comes out, like, because tomorrow's never guaranteed. Never. I don't know what happens from here. I don't know how I deal with this, or I don't have the answers for that. This is going to be a process. I just know I'm doing this video because my mum, my mum loved the YouTube video. It was like her highlight. She could tell me about every video we've uploaded. And so part of me, she just, it's, it's like she telling me, use this to help you, like. All I know is I was just sitting in my house and I was mad lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just didn't know, I didn't know. I woke up this morning like, like it was a dream. Not like it was a dream, because she didn't pop into my mind like that. Like I just woke up like, rah, boom, bam. You know when you wake up and it's time to go and it's, a new, it's another day, and then... I looked at my phone and the messages, and it all become so real quickly. But one thing I do know is God is great, and God works in mysterious ways, because the last conversation I had with my mum was so peaceful and amicable. I took Kaysen there and she played with Kaysen and that's how I know God is great. And a man said to me, if life is great then, or if life is good, then death must be better. It can't be bad. I kind of understand. At least she's in peace. Did she go early? Who puts her time on life, man? Selfishly for me, yeah, she went too early. Man. I need you to recognise, I need you to understand that if I ever publish this, if this ever comes out, if I ever air this, life's too short and we've only got one. There's no second chance. You can't replay the pain I'm feeling right now. I'm dizzy. My thoughts are... I don't, I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy. 
sometimes we as human beings, you know, we get caught up in a moment and we hold on to some shit that we just don't need to hold on to. That in the grand scheme of things, when shit like this happens, it's irrelevant. My father, he's irrelevant. Irrelevant. But me and my mum battled about it. Why is he irrelevant? Because in times like this, he's not about anyway. He's irrelevant. And even if he was about, what could he do anyway? Irrelevant. I've always thought like the cemetery would be like a, um, I don't know, like an eerie type of place, but it's quite peaceful. For me, yeah, YouTube, these videos, this is the significance, like. Someone said to me the other day, like, I asked them, they was describing me and they was like, oh, their perception was like, you like the limelight. Not as in showy off you or anything like that, just comfortable. And everyone's entitled to their perception. But you see, for me, the subscribers, each and every one of them, and to the people that I meet and have conversations about, Go down to the other day, a man said to me, where have I been? I haven't been doing videos. And yeah, I haven't. I've been going through a lot right now. Like, there's no manual for parenting. There's no book that tells you what to do. When you're going through certain things. you just got to go through them, man. That's a story for another day. But what I'm saying is, like, right now as I sit here, going through what I'm going through, and everybody goes through this shit, I'm not special. I'm just going through it. But the one thing, I'm gonna have to dig deep to find a video of my mum. And this is one thing, and this is one reason why I do YouTube with my sons and my family, is they will always be able to go back and see their life documented, whether it's good or bad. And that's the thing with me, I told you. I told you yesterday, I had to wait for the coroners to come and lift my mum's body and put her in the back of a van. And that was yesterday. This is as real as it can be. Through the good and the bad times, I can't, I, it's documented. My sons know I love them, my family knows I love them, my wife knows I love her. Like, no matter what you go through, I can only be me. I'm just Leo. And that's the piece I take from doing these type of videos. I don't really know how to feel right now. I'm a sad course, I'm sad, man. That's my anchor, man. I was the one person, the unconditional. It was unconditional. Unconditional. But mom, I'ma do you proud. I'ma make sure Casey knows you. I'ma look after the fambo. I'm going to do you proud, man. And I know I can feel you. I need you to understand that. Thank you. For real. Like, thank you for everything. Because you made me... You made me who I am today, man. And I'm ever so thankful. She got to go out like a queen, like... Like the queen she was. Trust me. I'm gonna make that happen. Make that happen. One thing though, that someone said to me today is it's an honor to be able to bury your parent. And especially when you've lived a certain life, like when you didn't know whether it was gonna be your parent burying you. Like, You've been through some shit. That's one thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna honor my mom. Trust me on that one. Right now, life for me is upside down, but you see what? You see these four days? I need this. I need this break right now. I need to be outside right now. I'll check with the locals. Look, look. This is the driver. This is our driver right Hello. now. Big boss. Peace and tranquility. I need time for a think, you see me? Man, them have to know that. Boy, if I go missing, I'm alright, I'm good. 
just doing me. So today, today I need to let off some frustration. So boom, bam, come and go gun range, innit? I'm going to let off some corn. Why not? Better to do it that way, innit? <laughs> So right now I'm in Turkey and I thought like go Turkey weekend or around the man them distract myself from this but you know big and serious it doesn't matter where you are what distraction you try to put in place these things peak, man. I was just sitting on the ocean on a big boat. Boat party, food, drink, everything. I went outside and I stood on the decking, away from everybody. Saw a picture of my mum. Reality just slapped me in my face. Like the biggest slap. In that moment, I knew I needed off that boat. Like, I told the man, them, I'm out, I'm out. Can't do this. Hide a speedboat and. Speedboat brought me back to here, innit? I said, let me just put on the camera and talk some. I don't know what grieving is, I don't, I can't understand that right now, but right now, I am mad lost. I don't really fear that kid's life, you know, that's not to say that I'm anything, I just don't really fear much. I look at life logical, it is what it is. But you see the 24th of this month, that day there, Haunts me every day. Cause after that day, I gotta find some way, some possible way to say goodbye to the one thing that was unconditional in my life. And that was mummy. I don't wish this on my worst enemy. And yeah, we've all gotta go through it. And a man called me the other day and he said to me, Raw big man, you have to draw on the support of others that have been through it. And I told him, You're triggering me right now. And the reason why it was triggering me is because mine and my mum's relationship's unique, just like theirs was. So it's not gonna be the same. You're not gonna understand. I don't know how to describe this. The only way I can describe this is if, if my child died tomorrow, that would supersede this pain. I don't know how to, how else to describe the pain I'm in right now. And I try to put on a happy face and I try to muster the strength from somewhere, but I'm just weak. I feel weak. This shit got me in a chokehold. And I feel weak. And the reality is no one can't help me right now. Nobody can help me. I don't want to be a burden on anybody. I don't want nobody's sympathy. This is my pain. It's my, cause I'm not really into like, spiritual stuff. Like, I have faith in God. I know there's a God, but I'm not really into the spiritual thing. But the wife is. But for some reason the other day, I felt like somebody went to give me a message. So you know what? I entertained going to what? You call like a, I suppose you call them a medium. I had like a half an hour phone call. But the mad thing was that I thought I was going to hear from my mum or I was going to hear something. It was very little about my mum and about other shit that's going on in my life. Like my health. But the thing, and this is just my opinion, it just left me with so many I must make up my mind scenarios or situations which can be dangerous. I'm that lost that I'm trying all these different things and they all lead back to the same thing. And that's just pain and sadness.
comfort in this dark time is how much my mum has loved me. Finding you next to me with the, the camera. Huh? I'm not actually retired. That's the family history there. Yeah. This is Frank Carl. The six pack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show him that, he put it on his Instagram for now. Yeah, well, they went to go back to his five, bro.
comes every day in the television. <laughs> Arts and craft, football. When I told you earlier on about the YouTube, it was your message, your WhatsApp message. I finally went into my mom's phone and I looked at my mom's WhatsApp message. And said, like I said, you see this pain, it goes from zero to a hundred, hundred to a zero. And uh, I'm looking at I saw that she said to you, TV you have uploaded, you need to watch. And it just crushed me right then and then. And I was like, no, I didn't have problem. I'm like, no. So I know that you was an integral part of my mom's life. Hi, Casey. Nice entrance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I'm going to see what was real to me as she was to everyone else. She got me one of my first jobs at the nurseries. And she's always giving me wise ways because I'm somewhat sensitive. <laughs> but she helped me to be so thick skin. And she's like, let it go, bro. Just let it go. Come for some dinner. <laughs> yeah, come for some dinner. She knows I like my belly every night. Leslie was like me in a lot of ways. She was strong and she was stern and she didn't mix her words. And that's me, if you know me. And she used to come from work and she used to sit on the doorstep. <laughs> and she used to read some with me. And she used to tell me to be strong for my kids. So now I'm telling Carl, be strong for your kids, yeah? She just used to tell me her thoughts. I just had to listen. I appreciate everything that she did for Carl, for us. And there's more of us, so it wasn't just me and Carl, there was a few of us got like, oh, all got to her, every person understand how this man's going to be the man he is because she, she nurtured him and she led him down the path that brings him where he is today. I couldn't generate the bouncing castle in my house with the electric one that power would you generate here. So I put it in the block. And the next day I went up there and Leslie's put sellotape over the plug socket thinking I was doing the electrics. <laughs> <laughs> and I knocked on the door. <laughs> this is true. And I just said, like, I'm not looking the electric. It just weren't generating. So we come to an all altercation. But in the end, I'm glad like, we spoke in the end. So yeah. big love to Leslie. But the last time I saw your mum was at your wedding, where we set our differences aside and hugged and danced and kissed and everything was fine. But anyone who knows me knows that every time I run up on your mum, we have an altercation. <laughs> but the last time was all good. So, big up yourself, Leslie. And um, we used to rave all the time. Rave. And remember Leslie's dance? Yeah, remember this? Yeah, anybody? Leslie's dance! All right. Yeah. 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 She took me under her wing and taught me everything, nurtured me, mentored me, we bantered together. She was like my mum um, at work. Counter and saying, like I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Sorry for swearing. No, 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 no. I don't hear a swear word for you. You do it for my mum. Ah, my mum, you know. My mom stabbed me with scissors when I was young. I said, Mom, <laughs> it's them type of tools you're not supposed to use. Like, allow it, like, yeah. She had me. She was my unconditional, my safe space. My mom will always be my superwoman and my superhero. Um, one memory I have of the early days when I was with Carl with Leslie is that he brought me into the washing up argument. So there would be washing up, Leslie would be cussing him that she's not doing it, and he would be cussing her, I'm not doing it, and then I would end up doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that she's up there, I hope she's up there with everybody that we know has passed. I hope she's up there with my dad. I hope they're here today. My dad never missed a party, so I'm sure. I'm sure he's about. And I just want you to know, Leslie, that you were loved so much. And I wish for you to rest in eternal peace. We love you. I'm going to play a couple of tunes for Leslie, and we're going to party. All right? No, you this. So everybody get up right now. We're going to party and sing along. Some of my Queen Majesty inside.
say something wise. Um, life begins, life ends. But lovers is lovers, and we all remain friends. Here you go. Couldn't ask for nothing more than that. Tell them something far. Live, love, love. Man, you got that from fucking IKEA, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, live, love, love, build for it. Yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> good, you know, make time for each other. And when you do spend time together, just live in the moment. You get me? Don't be thinking about the future and stuff. If you're with your people, just live in that moment, enjoy that moment. Yeah. We I like that. Get I like that. Nice. That's a joint message. What is it? Tell him. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him. It does. You have a little something for him? Just a little something? You never know who's watching. There you go. Mm hmm. Today's November the 1st, when we died on the 27th of September. It's crazy how much time has gone. And you know that my bridging said to me, <clears throat> make sure I do something after the funeral because that's when it becomes real or becomes peak or becomes, it's just something after. And I didn't really understand it, but now I kind of get it. Like, I was distracting myself so much, making sure that my mum's handwritten will was followed to the T and then some. And you know what? First of all, to all those that come out and supported me on that day, mad love. For all the messages I've got, mad love. Yesterday I had a counselling session and I'm, I've been very ignorant. I'm a very independent person. So I come from a single parent family and I'm an only child. I always felt like a counsellor can't, doesn't know my life. Like, how can you help me? No textbook can't help me. But I've been at the... This situation has made me be at a point where I don't even recognise, I don't understand it. I feel so sad and the pain is so deep and the hole I'm in is so dark and it's deep. Cool. But the thing about these things are, in services, if anybody out here works in services, I need you to understand something, you know. And that's why I, that's why I need to talk this back up. So I called this service, I'm not going to out them. A counsellor calls you back within 24 hours, yeah? I've given them a window, like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be busy after this, or I'm going to be around people, I don't really want to talk, so Friday before 5, Saturday before 4, cool. But your services call me back within 24 hours. You've asked me, am I going to hurt myself, do I feel that? I'm saying no. All right, 24 hours, you're going to call me back. Boom, bam. Friday, Saturday comes, I don't get no phone call. I call you back on Sunday, you tell me that I'm in a queue. Services, let me tell you something from now. My pain is not in a queue. I don't know what more to say apart from my pain is not in a queue and this is why I don't reach out to people because your service has already fouled me before we've even got started. Because you didn't even email me, text message me, nothing. If you're busy, I can get that. I'm a logical thinker. I know shit happens in life. But you can't just leave me hanging in limbo. That's why I don't reach out. There's no excuse. So I don't want to hear about services are inundated. They're under pressure. They're understaffed. I don't want to hear it. Shut your service down then. Because you can be a detriment to somebody. That's all i got to say about that. This, this thing is not easy. I'm just trying to document this to make people understand what it is they're going to be facing. I can't tell you, I can't tell you how you're going to feel or how you're going to face it. I can just tell you these are the type of things I'm encountering and maybe you might encounter some of the similar things. That's all I can say. I, I can't help you with, I can't help you with your pain. This is not a therapy session. This is not, I don't even, I won't even be able to understand. The funeral in itself was a madness. Dealing with the companies was a madness. You deal with these companies and they talk about bereavement team. They're not bereavement team. They're just a bridge in next door that just has to say he's the bereavement team. And then they just want to deal with how much money they're going to get from you. Or how much money they're going to take from you. That you got to deal with. All your admin to the person who died. But the, one of the things, one of the mad things that, I've, that I'm going through right now 
He's trying to pack up my mum's stuff. And I don't... My mum's closing all them things. I'm not sentimental like that. But it's when you come across things that are sentimental. Because you're having to dig through that person's whole life now. And it doesn't take a day. I've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. And even today, yesterday, I'm finding things. So what I'm trying to say to you is like, there is so many elements when you lose somebody real close to you. Like, my mum was my superhero. And right now, I'm condensing her life into boxes. I wake up in the morning, so like, I woke up this morning at eight o'clock. And the time right now is 18 minutes past 12. It took me nearly four hours to leave my house. I wake up and I just want to go back to sleep. I wake up and I got pains in my chest. And I know that's from anxiety and stress. I wake up exhausted. My sleep is broken. And I try, I try every day. Like, like I said before, this thing's got me in a choke hold. I thought I was strong, but this thing got me weak right now. <laughs> After message, after message, like, and even now, first of all, thank you to everybody that come out, that supported, that wanted to say goodbye, thank you, like I feel truly best that my mum was that loved, there were some real kind words in there, this thing called grieving, it's crazy. And all I can say to you is like, I would never know your pain. This takes you to some depths. It takes you on this, this ride from zero to a hundred like this. I'm going to be going through this for a hot minute. But if I do publish this, if this right now is on the TV screen and I've pushed to the public and it's not private, because I'm making this. Mama, I'm making this. Don't worry. We're going to be back. Right. Don't get it twisted. Met some good people. Done some good real shit. You see my mum? I can't find... I found one video and she's not even talking. And it was when we sung happy birthday to her. Video. Do you know how hard I'm searching right now to find a video of my mum where I can hear her voice? I will never stop doing YouTube. Trust me. Today is like, it's about seven weeks since mum passed in. I'm back to work. I'm going back to work. You know why it's important? It's important. Let me tell you why work's important for me. I can be real. So, Work's important because it's going to give me routine, it's going to give me structure. It's going to keep me disciplined. Like, I only drink social occasions. But what I found was, I was drinking excessively since mum died. And it, I wasn't getting drunk or feeling that nice vibe. I was just numb. And that ain't good for my health. I ain't really been checking my health. Or, so... Work will be good for me. Also, it's what mum would want. She was proud. She was proud of the levels I was getting to. Obviously, I'm in the middle of my training for promotion. Today, I go back to work. Seven weeks. It's been seven weeks. One thing I will tell you is that my grieving's only really starting now. I'm only really starting to kind of process certain things now. All I can say is, for me, I know that work, some structure, will allow me to breathe a little in this grieving process. It will allow me to uh, focus on other things rather than just stay in my head all the time. Talking to this camera has been therapeutic. It's allowed me to talk 
my thoughts out loud. We as men, we don't talk. I can generalize that, but I can say for me as a man growing up, my circles, my environment, my social settings, the person that I am, we don't talk, but you need to talk. Sometimes you need to talk, even if it's just to let off a bit of steam, just to let that valve, that pressure valve open a little bit before it goes pop. Tay Leo, all the good times. Now the one thing that stands out for us, and I keep telling Tay, is we're not characters. We're just us. We're just real. And if I'm going to keep and my word to that and I'm going to be real to myself, I have to be able to vlog the bad times as well. And you know what? This is the worst time of my life. I don't have the answers right now. I'm taking each day as it comes. I'm going from a zero to a hundred, a hundred back to zero. I've got people that check in on me, but ultimately I have to check myself. I do. What doesn't kill you can only make you stronger, no? I'm gonna revisit this on Mummy's Memorial. Cause I haven't even picked up my mum's ashes yet. That's another process for me. I'm gonna go and do that probably at the weekend. Cause I've still got all these other things to go on, you know. All these milestones, Christmas. Christmas is gonna be hard. Hard. For so many reasons. Mother's Day, her birthday, my birthday, Kason's birthday. Like, I got all these milestones to go through. Tay's birthday just went, she's not gonna be there. And for those out there that actually support us, and I'm talking, I don't talk fans, no, no, I'm not into none of that, no, no. How much time you don't cuss me talking when I see you, you telling me about, yeah, but you're a YouTuber. I'm not like that, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm just me, I'm just Leo. But you don't that support, that send messages. Please believe me, you are the freaking inspiration to why I pick up this damn camera every day. And I thank you lot, because you've allowed me to document my life. My children's life and my family's life. And God forbid something happened to me, they'll be able to hear my voice every day. And that's... That's wealth. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This has been Leo. We is Tay Leo. We ain't going nowhere. We're here. But this is real life. This is us. We're here, man. Trust me. Please. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell an auntie's friend. Oh, Tay Leo's doing bits and they're real. Until the next time. Peace.